Welcome to this presentation about the touch of sound, Dalcro's Eurythmics as a Somatic Practice. My name is John Habron. And I'm Karin Greenhead. I first came across the intersection between dance and somatic practices in 2009, and at the same time I was studying Dalcro's. I wanted to make a bridge between these different fields of practice and research. And so with Karin, we started to explore Dalcro's and somatics. This is um, a different way of doing it because Dalcro's is normally considered to be a form of music education or a type of music therapy. We published our article in 2015 in the Journal of Dance and Somatic Practices. The abstract and the link to the article you will find in the download which accompanies this video. Our research also allowed us to review some of the important connections between Dalcro's dance and various forms of movement work. Karin, would you like to say something about how Dalcro's and somatic practices came into being? Both Dalcro's rhythmics and the beginnings of what became somatic practices share their origins in the revolution in attitudes and thinking of the 19th century. Industrialization had led to a sense of a loss of connection with nature, the land, and the natural rhythms of life. There was a great desire to recover what was natural to human beings and necessary for health and welfare. During the 18th century, the ideas of Rousseau and Pestalozzi, with his motto of learning by head, hand, and heart, became particularly popular in Switzerland, and Dalcroze's education at home was inspired by Pestalozzi's ideas. A desire for contact with nature led to the founding of the Garden City Movement in 1898, and greater opportunities for travel led to an interest in other cultures and other times, and the founding in 1894 of the modern Olympic movement. The first modern Olympic Games were held in Athens two years later, Dalcro said that it was his experiences in Algeria that led to the development of his method. His supporters built a centre for the development of his work in the garden city of Hellerau, that between 1911 and 1914 attracted visitors from all over the world. Today, Dalcro's rhythmics and dance and somatic practices continue to share the elements of natural rhythm, health and well-being, and learning through personal experience. Dalcroze felt that music had become too abstract. The emphasis on theoretical knowledge resulted in a lack of know-how, personal connection, and bodily sensation and awareness. Music was disconnected from expression, emotional feeling, and communication. The method he created taps into the natural movement response to music. As infants, we naturally latch on to sound and rhythm and move in response to it. And Dalcro's Rhythmics incites this natural response and trains it. It develops the kinesthetic and sensory abilities and opens a meaningful connection between the inner life of feeling, perception and imagination and the external world of sound and music, space, objects, and other people. Dalcro's Eurythmics uses movement in different ways. Everyday movement refers to the way we ordinarily move and interact with the world and environment. It includes locomotor movement, such as walking, running, jumping, and the gestures of daily life stretching, brushing, pulling and pushing, twisting, and so on. Dance is the artistic and expressive celebratory side of Dalcro's Eurythmics. Dance is mostly rhythmicized using external musical rhythm, everyday movement rhythms, the rhythms of folk dance, and aesthetic movement. Somatics refers to the self-experience of the body, personal rhythm, breath, sensation, and massage. Dalcro's Eurythmics also has a technical and analytical side. These technical exercises use rhythm and movement to study, 
analyze and understand music and to develop bodily coordination and speedy, efficient responses. They use the body as a living and personal instrument of measurement and analysis. The three principal branches of Dalcro's Eurythmics, rhythmic solfege and improvisation, all engage with the gestures of music making and emotional qualities of music itself. They use improvised responses in movement and music to build musical experience, expression and communication by making music concrete. Follow the music exercises help students to tune into music, their environment and the teacher and to tune up their own response. In this first follow exercise, I bring students into the space which they use freely. They must take one step for every sound they hear. As they latch on to my music with their steps, their engagement uh, with the sound tunes ear, eye and body together. So that's one step for every sound you hear. In searching through the literature relevant to Dalcro's as a somatic practice, we found two foundational texts on the nature of somatic practice, one by Charlotte Baudouin, 2006, and the other by Amanda Williamson, 2010. Here we will briefly describe Baudouin's six elements of somatic movement education and how they relate to Dalcro's. Number one, doing movement. Primarily, Dalcroze is about moving. However, this movement, even when moving silently, is related in various ways to music and then trained by it. Number two, modifying posture. Pioneers in the field of somatics, such as Feldenkrais, see body positions as dynamic. In Dalcroze, body position is almost always related to whole body movement. Exercises relate to bodily coordination and articulation and include finding efficient ways to travel through space. Coming back to sensation, the principle that pre-reflective experience and know-how should precede cognitive reflection was fundamental for Dal Crows, who wrote that the whole method is based on the principle that theory should follow practice. In lessons, students are asked to show what the sound feels like in their body. What does the body want to do when it hears this sound? Number four, being attentive. Participants are encouraged to bring their attention to the body, sensory, sensory perception and the environment. The teacher invites them to enact their experience of music, their feelings about it and understanding of it. We show an example of this in our article in a poem I wrote about my very first Dalcro's experiences. Letting themselves go. In Dalcro's Eurythmics, this involves letting go of the need to control events and outcomes or rely on preconceived ideas. Dalcro's Eurythmics also relies on many different kinds of improvisation. Developing the quality of presence. 
The typical exercises used in dark rosa rhythmics invite students to live in the moment and respond flexibly, first pre-reflectively and then reflectively, as they modify and fine-tune their response and play with the music instead of simply expressing it. Many exercises require them not only to experience, but to show their understandings or intentions clearly in partner and group work. All six of Baudouin's elements are present in Dalcroze, and participants in lessons often talk about having transformative experiences. Recent phenomenological research, including our own, has explored this in depth and is referred to in our article. There are, however, <clears throat> some important differences between somatic practices and Dalcroze derivatives. Firstly, in Dalcro's Eurythmics, vision, kinesthesia, and hearing are connected. Secondly, movement and space are mostly rhythmicized, often by means of music. The rhythmicization of experience galvanizes the student into movement, and movement moves the mind, fostering creative thinking and problem solving. Carried on the wave of the music, students move in and into the moment without hesitation. They go with the flow, so that the brain does not interfere with the carrying out of intentions. As the response is experimental, provisional, and constantly revised, it works against perfectionism. Dalcro's Rhythmics also uses exercises to develop automatisms and in quick response that are often poorly understood. They are designed to bypass analytical or reflective processes and improve the fluency and speed of response to what is heard or seen. These exercises help in the acquisition of skills and build the ability to respond appropriately, flexibly and quickly without excess tension. This diagram is one way of visualizing the relationship of Dalcroze to music education and somatic practices. It shows how Dalcroze connects these two fields. In our article, we include this table that shows seven types of touch in Dalcroze. In the first column, we go through the seven types, the first one being direct physical contact with others. We then give examples of the contexts where this touch might be found, who is involved, what and how they are touching, and some observations. If we start with number one, direct physical contact with others, we note that in addition, materials are often used to develop communication and social skills, clarify and understand ideas, feelings and intentions, and to give instant feedback. If we were in the same room, we would show how two people can make contact. Instead, Karin will show both people, one as a purple glove. In this exercise, the hand is going to tell the glove where to go and how. In a real lesson, we might also do that using a stick as an intermediary. This time, the glove is going to tell the hand where to go and how to go there. But whoever is leading or following, both people have to push because if they don't, the stick falls down. So we get instant feedback about our engagement with the other person. Tapping on somebody's back is a way to communicate pulse and meter, and stroking can also be used to communicate duration. We can also make direct physical contact to show arrival at a cadence. For example, arriving at a table, chair, or a hoop at the same time. 
On the first phrase of my melody, we will meet together here. The second phrase ends here. The third phrase ends here. On the last phrase of the melody, we'll sit down together here. We can also be connected through direct physical contact in pair work, such as holding hands, linking arms, or phrasing with your partner in a phrasing exercise. We can give and receive weight with a partner, or a wall if we don't have a partner, or, as in this case, the piano. Under COVID and in online lessons, the use of materials was a useful way of increasing sensory participation for students. We used objects that you can find at home, for example, this bottle, to replace the, ball, the, the large ball, which a lot of people don't have. We can also use it for the phrasing exercise and to sort of occupy big space. It makes noises. So it has a, a lot of uses, this kind of bottle. Some people do have clowers. Teachers often have them at home. But if you don't, most people have spoons in the kitchen. And finally, the bean bag, if you happen to have that sort of thing, you can make one. The very useful object. And it makes a noise, it makes sounds. You can pass it from hand to hand. You can make, make it do other things. And use it as a sensory feedback object, like helping you know to keep your shoulder down. The second type of touch is massage and therapeutic touch. This is to increase bodily awareness, release tension, and take care of others and the self. Fascia release, such as kneading and tapping and self-massage, are examples of this. These can be used online and in the natural situation. The third type of touch is self-touch. This includes patching, clapping, and other sound-making gestures that can mark the beat and show duration. Here I'm just marking pulse. If I do it this way, I can show you two beats, two different beats. I can show you that I'm in three time or four. And all the time I'm doing this, you're not only seeing me make the sort of the beats, but you're seeing time passing in my gesture as it does if we use a gesture or clap. So I'm going to show you a steady pulse at this speed, and John is going to join in. John, would you like to clap twice as fast as me now? One, two. Can you go twice as fast as me? And tempo in time with me. And now, twice as slow as me. And in time with me again. Thank you. Not when I do this, <clears throat> I'm not only experiencing the movement from one beat to the next, but others in the class can see it. They can see that passage of time.
The fourth type of touch is playing an instrument. These can include small percussion, such as claves, and also tambours. In this case, the tambour, this is one person, will follow the bass, and my hand will follow the higher sounds that John will make. Dun, the fifth type of touch is playing the piano or another instrument. When playing the piano, it is the quality of the sound, the touch, which moves hearers and the class. The important thing here is the acoustic of the instrument and being in the same space to feel the vibration. This is why Dalcros has to be experienced live to be fully experienced. We will refer again to this shortly. The sixth type of touch is touching and manipulating materials such as balls, hoops, ropes, elastics, and scarves, and other objects that we've already shown. These objects are used as extensions of the body in space, communicating intention and musical expression. Finally, the seventh type of touch is touching an another person via an object, as we showed earlier with the stick. Sound not only enters the ear, it touches the whole body, setting it in motion. Sound waves travel through air and matter, penetrating body tissue through to the bone, inviting a largely instinctive and pre-reflective response, even in cases of hearing impairment. Speaking of live music, Oskamp identifies the qualitative difference of the sensation of sound in the body when the source is acoustic. She quotes Daniela Grassa. My body is acoustic. I feel easier with acoustic music. I experience it as physically closer. And Eileen Stanley. Acoustic music moves differently through space and reaches your body differently. The attack of a snare drum has a different effect on my body than electronic music. In addition to showing the common historical origins of somatic practices and dalcros and their contemporary connections, our article highlights some differences and questions where the limits of somatic practice actually lie, if they can include sound. We also looked at our bodies as sound-making instruments through, through activities such as body percussion and use of the voice. These examples perfectly and literally encapsulate the words of T.S. Eliot, who wrote, You are the music, while the music lasts. Thank, Thank you. you.